Hey pilots, it's your product specialist Wesley from here at Motion RC, and today we are checking out the newest upgrade available from Freewing, the dual tail flame afterburner. Uh, this is gonna be for any kind of bifurcated ducting system uh, on any of your models from 80 millimeter to 90. Uh, so in our range, like the F-18, the F-22, uh, the Eurofighter, just to name a few of them, but any of them have those two uh, rear nozzles. Today I have my custom F-18 here on the table. I'm gonna be taking it to Florida E-Jets and uh, it has every other modification on it, so why not add one of these to it? Uh, my buddy Dave Marshall painted this one up. And uh, we are gonna be also installing the new 2668 1900 kV motor that comes in a lot of our models into the aircraft because mine is a version one. Why not give it a little update while we're at it? So. Let's get down on the table, kind of show you what the packaging looks like and show you some of the different stuff we need to do to get it mounted onto this motor. And I'll show you that momentarily. All right, pilots. So for the first step in this process, you need to get your motor out of the aircraft. Now, in my situation, we're upgrading the airplane with a new motor. So this is our new uh, 3668 motor uh, that comes in a lot of our 90 millimeter aircraft. And I have a version one F-18, so I wanted to upgrade this. Uh, to the new high performance motor. Uh, and the first step you need to do is pick out which one of these little guys you're gonna use. Now, an easy way to do this is your motor can, will say, like in this situation, this is a 3668. So 36 is the can diameter. So I can go get the 36, and I know that's the one I need. So I can slide that on there and test fit it. And look at that, slides right on, no issue. So what we need to do now is get our little afterburner attached. Now in the case of mine, the, the fan uh, wires come out to the bottom, as you can see here. This is just a little bit of planning. So the little wires on the afterburners, I want to point to one side also, so you don't have them on the same side. Anyway, slide that guy off and let's put this together. All right, now, once you have your back plate picked out, you can see right here that there are countersunk holes on the inside of this plate. And that is so when the screw goes in, it makes it nice and flush, just like that. So they go on from the inside. Let's go on and take and hold that on there. Grab us a screwdriver. and we're gonna get that screwed in from the back side. There we go. Now you can see those two, two screws and my little plate attached to the afterburner. I have my wires coming out to one side where they are not impeding the fan, just as we need. And then you can see this little hole right here. We're gonna slide that over the fan now and put our wires through that hole. So, grab our little wires, put them through the bottom, just like so, and slide that on. Now, we're going to grab these little machine type screws and the nut that's a locking nut, like that, and we're going to put that on the afterburner itself. I'm actually gonna pop that back off, do this off of here, because I think it will be a little easier to hold in my hand and do this, just to get it started. There we go, that got it started nice and easy. 
Now we can put it on and clamp it down. Oh yeah, good and tight. And as you can see, there's what it looks like when it's all done. We have the wires coming out the bottom, the wires coming out the top, and now we need to get the jet out, get the airplane's motor out, and get this thing installed. All right, now that we have our motor put together, let's go on and pop our battery hatch off, or not our battery, but our fan access hatch off of the model. Uh, I have mine just setting here on this carpet. That'll keep it from getting damaged. Uh, you can always use a flight stand also. But for me, this just seemed like the easier way to do this. And that reveals our old ugly fan. We gonna get rid of that. So let's pull the screws for all of these. We don't need that where we're going. I need to magnetize my screwdriver real quick. If you haven't checked one of these out, this is one of the best products to have around you for situations like this. You take any screwdriver, stick it in there, and now it's a magnetic screwdriver. Fantastic. And then you put it through the other side and it'll demagnetize it. All right, now it should be as simple as just lifting the fan out and unplugging it. So there's that. Now, normally I'd have marked it, but it's a different fan completely. So we're gonna have to run it up to see if we plug it in right the first time. I doubt it. We gotta get that down in there. I'm gonna take my watch off so I don't end up tearing up my airplane, I'm trying to put my arm down in there. And we've gotta plug this in. Here's the hard part. <laughs> and hope we get it right the first time. All right, pilots, at this point, I have my motor switched out and plugged into my ESC. Now we need to actually run the wire for our, our afterburner up to the front. So you simply take the two leads that come off of the afterburner and plug them in color coordinated, black to black, red to red. And now we need to snake this wire all the way to the front cabin of the aircraft. Now this is probably the most challenging part of it. Um, what I tell you is if you have one of these, it's a come get them wire, they come in a lot of our free wing models. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. If you don't have one of these, just take you a simple small piece of wire, bend you a loop at the end of it so you can push that through the fuselage to get the wire out. So what I'm gonna do now is come in from the front, push this to the back, hook my wire on and push it through. go got it up to the front now our next big thing we need to do is make sure we secure our wires so they can't get up into the fan <clears throat> the kit's gonna come with uh, some of these zip ties so I'm gonna go on and take one put it right here at the base of the ESC And the more we secure this, the better it is, because a wire up in the, in the fan is definitely not gonna be your friend. So we should be able to take and set the motor down in there now, making sure to get all the wires in the, cha in the uh, channel. 
just like so. All right, guys. So at this point, I've got my afterburner in. I'm gonna have Lori cut in two pictures for you here so you can actually see the wire that goes down and I put my zip tie on it. And then I also put the wire under the ESC uh, hold down. That way it's keeping it from getting up into the fan. Now, once we get all this buttoned up, I'm also gonna find somewhere up in the fuselage to zip tie that wire to. That way I know that wire can never get sucked down the fuselage and get into this fan. So at this point, I'm gonna put my six screws back into the top of the fan and uh, we'll be off and to the races here. Here we go. Now that we have our six screws in, we can put our cover back on. Put those four screws in. Now we're ready to turn the airplane over and get this hooked up to our receiver. All right, pilots, at this step, I've moved the F-18 off the table to show you this. The F-18 is such a tight, confined battery bay that it would be really hard to show you how this actually works. But what we're gonna do now is show you how to hook up one of these afterburners on my little planky airplane here that I've made. Uh, this is the single tailpipe, but the front half of this is actually exactly the same, other than you would have the two burners at the back. Um, so for my example right now, I have this set up just like an airplane. Uh, if I turn it on, I can show you. So, Here's our receiver. We have our elevators, ailerons, rudders, and throttle. All right, all cool like normal. Now, in the case of our F-18 or any other airplane, you have your afterburner at the aft section of the aircraft. You have your wire ran up through the airplane to the front section of the fuselage. What we need to do is take the Y harness, like so, plug that, into our controller, then grab that wire that's passed up through the fuselage, plug it in. Then we're gonna remove our throttle channel that comes from our ESC, plug it into the Y, then take our Y harness that now goes to our ESC and our afterburner and put that into the port one or throttle channel. Now we can power up the aircraft. Give it a quick control check. Everything is working. Then we're going to power off of our little uh, module and the balance port of your uh, battery. Now, in this case, I'm using a 4S battery, so customers that have 8S systems, this is how it would work. Line it up with the black side, push it in, and that will turn it on. Now, as we give throttle, the afterburner comes on. Very cool. Now, another option you have, if you have an open channel, is we can always mimic our throttle channel and put our afterburner into an opposite channel. So let's show you that now. I'm gonna unplug all this, untangle all my little wires. So now, I'll put my throttle channel back into port one. And let's say we wanted to make our afterburner into channel five, which is normally the landing gear. So you can put it wherever you'd like. I guess we should put it in six. That'd be more normal, right? So we get rid of the Y harness. Let's put it in channel six for our afterburner. Let's see. Now I'm gonna go over to channel assignment Next, and channel six, 
we're going to make that throttle also. That simple. Now we can back out, go to our monitor screen, and when we move the throttle, you can see we have two throttles now on channel six and channel one. The other cool thing is if we set up a throttle cut, it still disables both of them also. There you go, by doing it that way. So now, like I said, we did away with the Y harness and we've put channel six as our afterburner. So now if we plug everything in, Plug in our afterburner. And now it's working without the Y harness and just into its own port. And if we throttle cut, you can see it also kills our afterburner. That's as easy as that is. So guys, now I'm gonna go on and put this into the F-18 and I'll show you what it looks like after we get it installed and fire up that afterburner. We did it! Hey, hey, you can let go of it. It's got the battery in it now. Uh, all right, so that gets our afterburner installed. Um, take your time, guys. That's the biggest thing I can tell you, getting one of these put in. Uh, as you can see, there it is. The hardest part of it is snaking your wire up and putting all your wires in the aircraft as cleanly as possible. Uh, but it is in there now. Uh, it is off, it is working. Um, let's see here. Give it that booty shot. Up and working. And there we go. That was as easy as it was to upgrade the motor and add that new dual tool, bleh, dual twin flame afterburner into our F-18. Uh, you can definitely do this, like I said, on the F-22, uh, the F-18, the Eurofighter, any of these ones with the bifurcated duct with two different exhaust points, that's where you're going to want to use this afterburner kit. So, guys, if you're new to Motion RC, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. As always, whether it's land, sea, or air, Motion RC has everything you want, guys. We're going to let y'all go and see you in the next video. Bye.